Hey, what's up everybody? It is Carlos Collects Comics and I'm back with another episode of Monday Hauls. This is the web series where I take you through my pickups from the last week to week and a half, sometimes even longer, of books I've been picking up. So stay tuned. All right, so hey, here we are with another what I'm calling a catch-up episode of Monday Hauls. I'm going through some books. I, I uh, missed a couple of weeks of the show, and uh, but the books didn't stop coming. So I'm here to show you some of the pickups and give you some recommendations for some books that I thought were pretty cool and might be worth your picking up and looking into. So let's go ahead and get started with them. All right, I can't... Uh, there is nothing, even with this big stack of books, there is nothing else that I could uh, start with other than one of the most pleasant surprises to come out um, recently. And that is G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, Saturday Morning Adventures, number one. This is from IDW, and this is a slice of my childhood. Can't uh, tell you how great it was. So this is the A cover for this book. Um, first thing you'll notice about the A cover, and this is um, the one, this is actually my favorite out of the three covers that have been released for it, but what you can see here is that this is the animation style of the original cartoon series, and the interior is exactly like it. It is fantastic. This retro art style does great for the story. The storyline is just like the type of um, storyline that you would get from the cartoon series. And the dialogue, the character design, the artwork, you know, that kind of childlike feel to it. Everything that you would get from an episode of the Saturday Morning Cartoon, exactly as it's promised in Saturday Morning Adventures, this is it. So this is going to be a limited uh, four-part series released from IDW. My hope is that they're going to continue it. Um, because this is the G.I. Joe that I've been looking for. This is the G.I. Joe I remember when I'd get up early, uh, fix that bowl of Fruit Loop cereal or some other way too sugary uh, cereal, and then enjoy the whatever the latest uh, G.I. Joe adventure was. I'd also do it after school because they showed them then too. Um, this is the cover B. I wasn't as impressed with the artwork here. Um, for, for the cover B. Uh, the third cover for this for this new series is the 1 in 25 ratio variant. Um, my LCSs didn't have those, so I'm you know kind of keeping an eye out for them on eBay. They're not in super high demand, but they are really cool. It's a VHS cover, but again, that artwork is not as reminiscent of the original series as this one is. So if, you know, so I'm, I'm not as crazy about getting it because I bought this 100% as a retro buy for uh, to kind of recapture that um, that feeling from the 80s cartoon series and this did not disappoint. It was exactly as I remembered it growing up. Everything about it. They even did a one page um, PSA uh, like they used to ending with those famous lines you know and knowing is half the battle. So fantastic pickup. Um, you know, th this is definitely a, nostal a nostalgia buy. If you're a big fan of the Saturday morning cartoons, this is this is for you. Um, I don't know if there's any spec value to them unless they decide to relaunch the cartoon series to, to relaunch it. Um, a neat thing about this, I will mention, this is in the same continuity as the cartoon series, not the comic book series. So. Um, they reference other events that happened in the comic book series, um, so it's 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 neat to um, it's neat to have something that picks up kind of where the where the comic series left off. So I'm looking forward to picking these up. I've added them to my pool pool list, and again, like I said, if you're into nostalgia, um, this is a book for you. Um, so other books that like some notable books that came out this um, this time, as you know. I have been um, a big fan of the new Moon Knight reboot. Um, issue number nine came out, and this series just continues to be a solid pickup. I did go ahead and pick up covers one and uh, covers A and B for this one, um, and I do still recommend it. I don't think it's lost a lot of students. It's definitely 
Um, you definitely have to start at the beginning and, and get where it's going, but um, I think they're doing a solid job with it. Um, and I'm, I, there's a couple of issues that I've missed reading in the middle, and I need to go and I need to go back and try to read the whole thing all the way through uh, to up to issue nine, and and just kind of see how I think, you know, and kind of refresh myself. You know, you read enough comics, you kind of start to forget what goes with what, and uh, and where certain, you know, how certain things fit together. That's the same for Noctera, um, issue number eight that came out. Um, recently, this is, I think, the cover A by Tony Daniel. This is a B cover here. And then this uh, is my favorite. It's probably one of my favorite from this series. Just a really nice watercolor um, look to this variant. I think this is the C cover. And so um, this one, you know, so you, it's, a, it's a good, Nocturne number 8 is a good jumping on point for... Um, Noctera number eight is a good jumping on point for people who um, have maybe heard about the series but haven't um, ha hadn't read it yet. Um, one through seven was uh, one arc, and then there's the Blacktop Bill special uh, number one, which which start which you need to read to get to this one, and then eight and on. I think is going to be another arc, and so they've got a whole new kind of um, goal and quest set up. Um, they carry on with the Blacktop Bill character and the Nocturnes that are, um, you know, so it's, 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 it's a lot of world building that's already taken place and this one just continues on with it. Uh, the neat thing about it is that it's, it's very clear who everybody is. It's very clear about their character. Um, it's easy to pick up. I think that you'll you know, if you're picking this one up and you're going to try it out for a few issues, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Again, Tony Daniel just knocks it out of the park with the with the interior art, and um, the, you know the covers are cool. And this is just, this still hands down is one of the best sci-fi concepts to come out within the past few years, and it's it's and it's executed well too for the comic book. I have high hopes for the show because it has been optioned. It does have. Um, some creatives attached to it, and they are working on it and developing it for the screen. So I'm really hoping that it's going to be something um, really special and really solid. Um, but I've, you know, as a comic as standalone, as a comic book series only, it's great. It's well worth the read and well worth picking up. So if you haven't yet, um, check out issue no, uh, the Blacktop Bill special number one, and then check out issue number eight. And those two should give you enough to go on if you, so you can know uh, whether or not you want to keep going with it. Um, a few other number one issues that I want to, or a few number one issues that I want to get into real quick. So Iron Fist, Iron Fist number one uh, showcases the new Iron Fist. And so um, I don't think there's spoilers, but I, I think everybody kind of knew, but I'm not going to mention it, who the new Iron Fist is. But obviously it's not the original Danny Rand. Um... I'm willing to give it a few. Um, I, I've, I like the classic vintage Iron Fist and Luke Cage um, stories and kind of their heroes for hire thing. I'm willing to give this a few um, issues, but I really kind of want to see what they're going to do with it, what else they're going to do with it. I'm not fully convinced after issue number one. So that's kind of my take on this. I think it's just the cover A for it. Um, but yeah, I'm... You know, let's see what happens with it. Um, Strange number one, following the events of the death of Doctor Strange, um, there is a new Sorceress Supreme. Um, I only picked up two variants for it, and I didn't, um, I didn't get a chance to read it before I recorded this video. So this is Strange number one, the J. Scott Campbell variant, and then this is Strange number one, the... Um, uh, art germ variant. Excellent uh, cover art. Interesting take on the story. Um, you know, Doctor Strange has been around for quite some time, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to play out in, in this new title. Um, I'm also looking forward to seeing how it's going to bleed over into um, Strange Academy, which I did pick up the second print for issue number 15. Um, really disappointed with kind of what whatever the quality issue was with this. Um, 
this this second print was like all crunchy and whatever. I mean, I think it can be pressed out, but it's really weird. And the whole stack at my LCS was like this. So, uh, I don't know, Marvel LCS. I'm not sure what's going on, but this was not a good thing. But I, you know, the Strange Academy is actually a really solid title. Um, if you know, it's it's not just hype. It's uh, reminiscent of some of the best parts of, of X Men and other. Um, teen superhero or teens learning how to superhero storylines that you've come across um, and it's just you know it's a solid it's it's a it's it's a solid title so I think it's worth sticking with and I'm really impressed with Scotty Young and Umberto Ramos um, and, and their work on it I think it's it's some of their best work yet and I'm looking forward to seeing um, where they're going to go where they're going to continue to go with it because I think it's a fun it's a fun title um, and like I said, I'm interested in seeing how the death of Doctor Strange is going to continue to spill over into this title. So, um, I also, I picked up, this was an interesting find. I, at, I was scouting through Half Price Books and I found a Near Mint Plus copy of the Geiger 80-page 80 spe, 80 special, or 80-page giant. Um, normally, a $7, cover price is $7.99, so I paid like, I think, 3 or 4 bucks for it. Um, but yeah, that's always nice to pick up something that's brand new off the rack, but find it for in near mint condition for half of cover price, and th so that's nice. So I I um, pulled I dropped Geiger from my pull list, but um, you know it's it's a solid story. It's a solid story world. I just didn't respond to it as strongly as some of the others, so I dropped it. But um, you know when I saw the eighty page giant for um, for half price, I couldn't resist it. Um, and my LCS, uh, last one that I wanted to update you on, Cross to Bear. I picked up issue number four. Um, this, again, is a neat little title. Um, I put this in the same, um, I classify it the same as a uh, sword, Seven Swords uh, or um, Scout's Honor. Those are two series that I thought were really solid concepts, really solid ex you know, um solid enough execution and then um, kept my interest and I'd like to see something be done with it. I don't know if anything ever will, but they're just neat independent titles that, you know, it's, it's neat to take a break from, you know, capes and tights and superpowers and, you know, kind of deal with a different type of a, like a horror uh, adventure type of thing, a chase. So that's a neat book to, to pick up. So if that's kind of your thing, um, if you liked um, the kind of the chase element that ran through the 90's Dracula film, Bram Stoker's Dracula with Keanu Reeves, Winona Ryder, and Gary Oldman. Um, yeah, I know that's like a really random way out there comparison, but this might be something for you. Also rounding out the home stretch uh, from my half price books finds, what if uh, f the Fantastic Four had lost the trial of Galactus. This is What If number 15, about a mid-grade. What If stories, you can't go wrong with them because they're always fun, especially not for like 60 cents. Um, and then I found still in the poly bag with the card, um, X-Men number 14, Executioner's Song, uh, part 3. So this is for my personal collection, my X-Men collection. You know that I had a uh, had um, started picking those up, and um, I've got a couple of autographed copies from of, from Chris Claremont here. But this is a this is a fun one that I picked up, and again, for seventy five cents, how how can you how can you pass on it? The last one, which was a neat uh, pickup. Um, anytime I come across these books for five dollars and under, I will generally always go ahead and pick them up. Um, this is Tom Landry and the Dallas Cowboys. This, I'm not a Cowboys fan at all, but I love the Spire Christian comics, so I will pick these up from time to time. There was a lot of them that were produced. I also had um, picked up a copy of The Hiding Place uh, recently, and so whenever I come across these, I do, you know, if they're, if they're again, for a decent price, I'm not going to pay $12, $15, or $20, as I've seen some copies uh, priced at, you know, that were really beaten up, but, you know, something like this for five dollars to get a classic book like this for this little miniature but growing part of my collection I figured why not 
So that those are the pickups for this past uh, week and a half-ish or so. Um, this, like I said, this is a catch-up video. I had um, taken a couple of weeks of Mondays off, uh, but am doing my best to get ahead of the game. So I recorded this actually a couple weeks ago, uh, from the time that you'll be seeing this, um, just to catch up on all the books that had come in that um, that I wanted to showcase and and share with you about. So make sure and uh, drop a like for the or give me a like for the video. Um, make sure and drop a comment below. Let me know if any of these books um, piqued your interest. It, was there anything that I missed out on over the past week to week and a half? Was there anything that um, that I that you feel like I should have picked up? Anything that you saw here that was neat that you hadn't heard up or weren't able to weren't able to get a hold of? Um, also, make sure if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, um, and above all, hit that notification bell so that you can be um, notified when a new video goes live. I'm Cross Collects Comics. This has been another episode of Monday Halls, and thanks so much for tuning in. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you. I'll see you next time.